Hello and welcome to the Kingpin Crime YouTube channel. Today we will be looking at one of the richest gangsters in the UK with an estimated wealth of £300 million, John Palmer. Amongst a long list of criminal activities, he was involved in laundering money by melting gold stolen from one of the biggest heists in the UK, reportedly worth £100 million today. John Palmer was born in Solihull, Warwickshire in September of 1950. Born into a large family, he was one of seven children. As a child and throughout his teenage years, John struggled with education due to his dyslexia, eventually leaving school at 15 to work with his brother Malcolm at a roof tiling business. He was also known to sell paraffin from the back of a lorry and would later marry Marnie Ryan in 1975 in Bristol. During this period, he also began multiple companies that would begin to be very successful eventually finding himself running a gold and jewellery dealing company by the name of Scadlin Limited in Bedminster, Bristol with his business partners Garth Chapel and Terence Patch. There was always a criminal undertone to Palmer's dealings throughout his career, with one example being that both him and Chapel had been arrested in 1980, charged with obtaining credit on furniture by providing false references, which resulted in Palmer receiving a six month suspended prison sentence. In 1985, following the November 1983 Brinks Matt robbery, Chapel and Patch of Scadley Limited were arrested for their involvement in melting down £26 million worth of gold from the robbery to try and pass it off as legitimate. Two days after, armed robbers Brian Robinson and Mickey McAvoy were jailed and Chapel withdrew £348,000 from the company's accounts in order to avoid seizure. Throughout their trial, a total of £1.1 million had been withdrawn which would indicate that the evidence being presented was sold enough for the men involved to be concerned. During the initial raid on Scadlin Limited, one of the suspects refused to confirm what they had been melting down. It was discovered they had processed millions of pounds worth of gold, but claimed it was gold they had purchased legitimately. The company account showed that they sold gold for virtually the same amount as they had purchased it for, which raised red flags to investigators. The company was also ordered to pay back £80,000 in unpaid tax after evading payments. Just days before his company was raided and its directors arrested, Palmer fled to Tenerife. His family returned to England while he sold his remaining assets back home, also setting up a timeshare business at Island Village near Playa de las Americas. He attempted to move to Brazil after Spain signed an extradition treaty with the UK, but he was arrested and his entry refused after travelling on an expired passport. He was deported back to England and forced to face trial. Despite Palmer admitting to melting down gold bars from the robbery in his garden, he was acquitted in 1987 after claiming that he wasn't aware where they were stolen. In 1993, The Independent reported he was subject to an asset freezing Mariva injunction gained by Brinks Matt from the High Court of Justice, enabling investigators to track his substantial finances. He later paid out £360,000 to Lloyd's Insurance as a result of civil action brought against him. Due to his connection to the Brinks Matt robbery, Palmer was given the nickname Goldfinger. In 2001, he defended himself in court after sacking his legal team, during one of the longest fraud trials in British legal history. He was found guilty for masterminding the largest timeshare fraud on record and jailed for eight years, reportedly deceiving 20,000 people out of a total of £30 million, but only served four years in prison. His fortune at the time of his conviction was estimated at £300 million, but Palmer was declared bankrupt in 2005, with debts of £3.9 million, which would put those claims in doubt. In 2007, he was arrested for fraud after allegedly continuing his criminal activities during his prison sentence. In 2009, after two years without charge in a high-security Spanish jail, he was released on bail, but was ordered to report to court authorities every two weeks. In 2015, the Times alleged that Palmer was protected from arrest by a clique of high-ranking corrupt Metropolitan Police officers, after Operation Tiberius files were leaked. Also in the documents, it was revealed that associates of Palmer were detained while in possession of a silenced Uzi submachine gun, with 380 rounds of ammunition. His enemies caught up with him, however, when he was shot six times and killed in his home on the 24th of June 2015, aged 64. At the time of his death, Palmer was facing charges in Spain for fraud, firearm possession and money laundering, and it was revealed he opened the first Russian timeshare company in the 1990s. A special BBC documentary presented by broadcaster Roger Cook revealed that since 1999, police had run an intelligence operation on Palmer from an RAF base in Cumbria. 
Palmer was under surveillance by a secret police unit for 16 years leading to his assassination. A serious and organised crime agency, now the National Crime Agency, had gathered intelligence on Palmer in an operation codenamed Alpine because of concerns of corruption in the Metropolitan Police. The empire Palmer had built was a complex network of 122 companies, many based offshore in the Isle of Man, Madeira and the British Virgin Isles. He funnelled the money from these companies through 60 offshore bank accounts. On the 4th of February 2017, a 50 year old man was questioned on suspicion of Palmer's murder, but ultimately wasn't arrested. To this day it hasn't been confirmed who killed John Palmer, but many rumours exist, such as ones reported in 2020 by Birmingham Live News that he had been killed by the Russian Mafia. This concludes our video on one of the most prolific criminals of his era, who both built and lost a vast criminal empire. Thank you for watching, please like, subscribe and share.